All right, guys, can everybody hear me okay? So this is pretty informal. Um, I think Dr. Monica and Letty were planning on coming, I'm not sure. Um, but we're, the point of this was just to kind of talk through some cases and to get some discussion. Um, and my uh, assignment was scaphoid fractures. So the first one here is going to be a case that I just saw yesterday. Um, and this was the end of the day. This was a, a kid that was referred to me. He's 10th grader. He plays the first line on the ice hockey team at Tom's River. And he had a fall um, playing ice hockey about four weeks ago. He initially presented to the urgent care facility and they weren't sure if they saw anything. So um, they had him follow up with a, a different orthopedist and then something happened and then there was a delay in care. So needless to say, he comes to me at four weeks. He has, he's in a wrist splint and he wants to play hockey. So let's start with, you know, an examination of these x-rays and Jason, you're, I see you right in front of me. So do you want to take this one and, and tell me what we're looking at? Let me, let me stop you for one sec. You're, you're look, this is a PA. So you're shooting from posterior to anterior. And then the third view is more of a scaphoid view, which is a PA with ulnar deviation. Okay. That's a good question. He is right hand dominant, but he, um, you know what? I don't know because the Canadian way, a lot of times they put the dominant hand on the top. Yes. And the only reason I know that is because my son played hockey and he, it was like reverse. There you go. All right. So. So we have these x-rays, he's four weeks out. Um, what do we wanna do next? What's your next step here? Let's, let's bump this up to, to Jeremy. He's, he said every day he puts on this, this thumb brace. Give me a show of hands. Who wants to get a CAT scan here? Anybody want to get a CAT scan? Anybody want to get an MRI? Why? What are you, what are you looking for? Okay. All right. So, so in my mind, in my mind here, the MRI is used for diagnosis. And then the CT stick scan is used when you start to think about treatment options. Okay. So if you're unsure of the diagnosis, that's when you're going to get an MRI. This kid came with an MRI, which was already done. And I'll show you that picture right there. So the MRI, so the question, is it a complete fracture? Is it a fracture? The MRI should show you that. Hello. And this is the uh, fracture through the proximal pole and you see the bone edema right here. At four weeks, I think it'd be a little early to see avascular necrosis changes. So I, don't, I think if he didn't have an MRI, I might not have gotten any additional imaging, um, but it was there, so I just wanted to show it. So Lou, this is a case of a high level hockey player, 10th grader, comes to see me four weeks out from an injury, uh, a fall on his, um, on, on his wrist. Um, and we're talking about what we wanna do now. So Jimmy said he wants to fix it. How are you gonna fix it?
Would anybody treat this non-operatively? Right. Either 15 or 16, he's in 10th grade. So here's the question. Let's say you say you put him in a cast, would you let him play hockey? What if we could design an orthoplast splint that allowed him to get his hand around the stick? Are we okay with that? Okay, all right, so let's, so despite the practicality of playing with the cast, let's say he was a lineman for the football team. Same exact situation. He doesn't need wrist motion. You can put him in a cast and then overwrap it. Would, would we be okay with that as a option here to treat him conservatively? Even with even in a cast, you don't think it's 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 enough. I, I think it's I think that's an unanswered question. What do you think, Liv? Even for proximal pole. Okay. And, and seeing him at four weeks versus three days, does that change your management? He's four weeks now. He was in the office last night, four weeks. And what about his hockey season? Okay, so, so he's, he's unwilling to give up hockey. He says, is there any other option? So, so to, right, so, so to Jimmy's point then, we're gonna go do an operation. Are we going to bone graft him at the same time? And if so, do we wanna take the iliac crest? Do we wanna take distal radius? Do we wanna just, Put a screw in it. Right. Okay. So I would agree with that. And you can either do it percutaneously, that's Joe Slade's technique, or a small open incision where you move the EPL and then put the screw in it. So he's on the schedule for next week. He's going to get a screw. We're going to put it in from uh, dorsal to volar. He's going to go in a splint for a week. And he comes in now and his wounds healed and he's got minimal pain. And he's like, doctor, I wanna play hockey. What do we do now? Yeah, he's two weeks post-op, his wounds healed. He's, he, his fingers are moving well and he wants to play hockey. Do we let him play hockey with a screw in here now? Given what you know about needing some sort of wrist motion and you know the additional casting probably wouldn't work logistically. But we're not even sure that a mobilization is gonna make a difference. There, we, we don't have any good studies that show additional immobilization is gonna make this heal any better. 
So the earliest time you could probably get a CAT scan to show that is what, four weeks, six weeks? So maybe after Christmas, you'd let them go back when it's partially healed. And the thinking is that there's too much stress on that screw when he plays hockey that, what's that? That it'll, yeah, it, it won't heal. He'll get micro motion, he'll loosen around the screw. Right? But if, if we treated him conservatively, would, when would you think about getting a, a CT scan to look for that 50% healing? Four weeks from now. No, no, if you treat him conservatively. You put him in a cast. All right, so we're talking about two-week difference, maybe? They don't need the external immobilization. Um, and if it was a waist fracture versus a proximal pole, would we feel more comfortable letting them go back almost immediately at the two week instead of the six week time period? Young kid, good bone, you're gonna get great purchase on the screw. So what you guys are saying is if we put the screw in, we might be able to get them back two weeks earlier. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. And also eight weeks in a cast, he's going to be very stiff. So I don't think he's going to have enough wrist motion to play hockey well. Waste fracture. Yeah. I don't think you can. Right. And what would we say the, you know, from a, a fracture, which was not really immobilized initially, what's his chance of healing this in a cast? I mean, what do you think? What, throw out a number. Yeah, I would say 60%. So maybe a reason to do this surgery, forget about hockey this year, is because if this goes on to a non-union, he's in real trouble. I mean, that's a big operation with a, a lower success rate and more immobility, right? I think he can still get this, like Jimmy said, with the screw now. And then my question is, is do I let him go back with the protected play for a period of time, get a CAT scan, show some healing, and then remove the splint, or do I just keep him out until after Christmas? And I know what he's gonna wanna do. He's gonna wanna go back and, and do it right away. Do you think, Lou, that's reasonable, or are you more conservative to let him go back? Well, the, what I'm planning to do is do a minimally open, non-bone graft, dorsal screw, immobilize for two weeks, return to restricted play, CAT scan, kind of like Todd said, when I see 50% healing, then I'll go, let him go back with that restriction to be continued. All right, that one, that one just came in last night. Um, here's an interesting case. So this... Um, patient presented um, 321 and actually saw my PA um, after a fall. So um, who wants to take this one? John, you want to do this one?
Okay. So, so I agree. I don't see anything. He's got, he's got snuff box tenderness and he's got a little swelling. How do you treat him? I think that's exactly right. So we saw him, we put him in some immobilization. We did a splint, not a cast. And we said, come back in two to three weeks. He showed up two months later. And this is what we have. Yeah. Maybe. Right here. Yeah. No, no, it's true. So, so giving what I said before, if you're going to get a diagnostic test, what do you get here? No, no, this is initial. He just came in. Yeah, exactly. You get the MRI and you see and you see what he's got. Yeah. And if they're unreliable, put them in a cast, you know, because, you know, then, then, you know, at least, you know, your immobilization clock starts right away. In a splint or a cast? Splint. Okay. Okay, so now he comes back in in May, and this is what we have. So, Anna, what do you think? Two months. So, when we say non union, what, what time period do we need for a non union to occur? Where is he displaced? Maybe. What would we call these things right here? Sorry. We can't do presented. Oh, slide it to right. Okay. You have an immediate? That's no, all right. So, like right up in here, what do we think is going on there? Yeah. So, um, let's see. this is just another view of the. That's your scaphoid view right there. And then this is just another. View. So he's got wrist pain. He has restricted range of motion. Done, done. All right, so what do we wanna do? What's that? He's 26.
Now, I think that's a very reasonable option. That's a very aggressive option, but I think you, um, <laughs> I think you're going to significantly. In What's that? Yeah, that's the, that's that's you're throwing the kitchen sink at them. So would anybody just start putting them in a cast and maybe augment it with a bone stimulator? Let's say he's reliable. I mean, yeah, I think I think you're. I, I think it's unlikely to work. I think in this day and age with surgery, there's probably a better option. And you're telling him it's going to be four plus months of casting. Your wrist is going to be very stiff. We're going to get one or two CT scans, and then we might be doing surgery down the line. You know, I think that's. I, I think that's hard to tell. I think that's hard to tell. Yep. So what do you think, Lou? What are you doing here? Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I, I treated this a little bit differently. And um, I went dorsal and I took an iliac crest bone, uh, not an, uh, just a radius bone graft, and I just filled the gap in. And interestingly, the, um, the cartilage dorsally was not cracked, which is a little bit unique. I mean, you see that, you see the resorption underneath but I had to actually go through and ronger some of that dorsal cartilage in order to put the, the graft in. No, no, it was just Cancellus graft. So, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think in retrospect, that idea of getting a CT and looking for humpback, I didn't appreciate it as much on the lateral. Um, and then I did it this way. And I think for these waist fractures, you can either go dorsal or volar. Personally, I like dorsal just because I can get that screw center center. Um, and I don't have a problem just kind of working up and, and, and filling it in with, with uh, graph that way. Yeah, so that's a great, great question. And, you know, we just did that literature search and there's really no great answer on that. But in my mind, this is different than the acute one. So I, I, unreliable guy, I casted him for an additional eight weeks. I mean, it's a lot, but I was like, you know what? We're coming back in here. We took distal radius graft. I don't want to do this again. So I additionally put him in a cast without really good literature to support it, but I just felt more comfortable. Here he is about a month later where you see early incorporation of the, of the graft. And I actually just saw him last week and he's just about healed. So he's getting his mobility back. It will be probably another couple months. Um, would anyone get a CAT scan now just to confirm healing or do you think this X-ray is enough? Okay, yeah, yep, I did. I did, I opened it up, I, I did a curatage, got rid of all that kind of cystic changes and then packed it. Would you have not put graft in there and just screwed it or, yeah. Then you're gonna open it up. Okay, here's the next one. This is uh, more of a trauma injury. Uh, this guy had a work injury where he had a, uh, a pallet fall on the dorsum of his right hand. So uh, Rob, take, hey Jane, uh, Rob, take us through this. What, what are you looking at here on uh, this fracture? Okay. 
ครับครับครับ Do you think there's articular displacement at the distal radius? When I saw it, like, what's this right here? And then it kind of drops off. Like, to me, that was a little bit concerning. <laughs> yeah. And interestingly, this guy gets, it's, it's rare not to get the three views, but he came in only with two views. So the first thing I did was got a um, oblique. And so what do we see there then now on the oblique when we see that? Yeah. All right, so what do we wanna do on this? So um, Andres, what do you think? We got what looks like a scaphoid fracture. We have something going on in the dorsal aspect of the distal radius, and then something over at the level of the ulnar styloid. So the question is, is do we want to put them in a cast? Do we want to get additional imaging or do we want to take them to the OR? Q, three days. Yeah. He's uh, 30. So if it is displaced, a scaphoid fracture, how should we treat a displaced scaphoid fracture? Yeah, I think, I think the literature would push us more towards surgery. But are we convinced that it's displaced? All right. All right, Todd wants a CT. Would anybody just take him to the OR now? No? Okay. All right. All right, so we got a CT. So, um, Jim, what do you think on the CT? These are two different lateral cuts. Show you one more view of the CAT scan. So, what do you want to do now? Does he go in the cast or does he get surgery? Okay. And what are you going to do? Anybody else? Dan, you want to do it differently? You want to do your iliac crest bone graft here? Okay.
Okay. So the other two options I can think of are go volar for the um, scaphoid and leave the radius alone, or go volar for the scaphoid and then go over and go dorsal for the radius. Anybody like either of those options? First option, we're going dorsal. What do you think, Jane? Will you want to do something different? Would you cast this guy? Okay. No, no, no. Pri instead of surgery. After seeing that CAT scan? All right. Take you through. Oh, I think I just went too fast. It's yeah. Um, oh, there I go. Play that again. That's just that that shows you more what that distal radius looks like. Okay, so let, right, that's a great question. Let's say we didn't have the scaphoid and you got that CAT scan, would you fix the distal radius? Would you take them to surgery and do a dorsal approach and fix that piece or just, just treat them in a cast? I think that's probably what I would do too. So here's his post-op x-rays and to correct the humpback deformity or the flexion of the scaphoid, I put a pin in the distal fragment and it extended it up, put a second pin in the proximal pole, aligned it right, put two pins to hold it and then put my screw in. And then since I was there, I put two small screws to further stabilize the um, dorsal aspect of the distal radius. It wasn't too comminuted. And um, it really wasn't unstable, but I was there and I said, hey, you know, if I'm going to start some gentle range of motion for him, um, why not have the protection on this dorsal piece? All right, here's the next one. Um, this comes to you uh, one year out, one year out, and they've been complaining of intermittent wrist pain on the radial side. So um, let's start back down with Jason. What are, you, what are we looking at here? I think, no, I think you're on the right track here. And I'll show you the um, oblique. So it's, it's an established non-union. So Anna, what do you wanna do next? Uh, go ahead. I think six months. So, do we want? No, when it when it when it when it occurs. All right, Dan. Do you want additional imaging here? Okay. 
So we get a CAT scan. And this is a lateral view with the fingers being on the right side. What do you think? Is this displaced? Okay. So I think this is the, and it, it's probably hard because I have it rotated, but this is the humpback deformity. This is where that distal piece goes into flexion. And this is just an examination of a height to length ratio. I don't typically use this, but this is just an example of a distal pole that's flexed down. And basically when you look at the um, ratio between the height and length, as those start to get closer, then you know that you have more collapse. And on a true lateral. Yeah. I agree with that. So you have a, so this case, this guy is one year out, wrist pain, humpback deformity, non-union. So John, what do you want to do now? And then what, um, how do you want to fix it? You, you go ahead and put a graft in there. Yeah, I, I, and a headless compression screw. I think that's very reasonable. Which, which fractures do you worry about the vascularity? More so. Right. So that's a good question. Proximo, would you have gotten an MRI on this too before you did surgery? Yeah. And, And are the x-rays enough? Let's say you see either sclerosis or fragmentation. So you don't see a role for an MRI, MRI with contrast here. You're just going to fix it. Would it would, the only question I would ask is, does it change the type of graft you're using? You know, if you see sclerosis there and it's a little more proximal, would you go iliac crest versus distal radius? I think I would too. All right. So this is, um, this is what we did. A volar approach. Uh, you can see the pins that are placed in the um, proximal fragment right here, the second pin in the distal fragment. And it looks like it's aligned, but it's not because it's just flexed down. So the next picture here is once we opened it up. So basically, we're kind of pulling it open, and that's more reestablishing the normal alignment of the scaphoid. And then we're just doing a curatage of this area right here. So you say, why do I need something structural? It's because that's going to want to close back over and that distal pole is going to want to flex back down. So it's pretty impressive when you clean it out, how open that space is. And then here is your insertion of your structural graft. In this case, this is an iliac crest graft. And then the supplemental fixation with the screw. So here's just an example of, you know, what's happening with those non-unions, how it flexes down and shortens. And you can see on the bottom how big that piece of graft needs to be to reestablish the height of the scaphoid. Any comments on that, Jane? I think that's a good question. And I think that if you can get it, it's difficult now because you're doing a little shish kebab where you have three pieces, but if you can get it and you're happy with it, 
um, I'll take it, but sometimes I'll use supplemental fixation if I need it. And then here's, and then the screw is insert, obviously bowler approach, so the screw is inserted from bowler to dorsal, and then this is just the um, final pictures of him. So this next one is a 16-year-old lineman. Uh, he initially saw one of the non-op sports guys and um, had an accident uh, playing football, and he was diagnosed with a wrist sprain. So I won't go too crazy on this one, but I didn't see anything. I went back and looked at this. I didn't see anything on the um, x-rays here. You, obviously, you see the open physis. And then he comes in three months later. He still has uh, wrist pain. Um, the non-op guy wasn't exactly sure what to do, put him in a cast and said, come back to see me next month. So at four months, the guy's still complaining of pain, comes in with these x-rays and then um, was referred to me. So Todd, what do you think? Pretty similar to the, that first case we had. He's four months out now. So four months out, hasn't been immobilized, proximal pull. Do you want additional imaging? Do you want to just operate? He's 16. He's 230 pounds. He's going to play D1 football. Okay. Yeah, I would say that's, I'd say that's proximal to, to middle. Anybody else want to get a CT? Anybody want to get an MRI and look at the vascularity? Anybody want to just operate? Rob wants to operate. Okay. I, Jamie, would you get a CT? Yeah, I, I didn't either. Um, Lou? Okay. Anybody get an MRI here? You don't like those vascular graphs, so it's not going to change anything. Exactly. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Um, um, when you talk to his parents, are you going to explain that you may do bone graft or are you not going to do bone graft here? Iliac crest or distal radius? Yeah, that's exactly what I um, stayed out of the physis, distal radius, curet, curettage, and then put my screw in there. And would anyone have gone volar on this one, or would everyone have done it dorsally? Any takers on volar? Yeah. So this is just a good slide showing the mechanics of why we don't go volar on the proximal pole fractures. And you can see that if you go volar right there, depending on how much trapezium you, you remove, you're only gonna get a small portion of it. Whereas on these smaller proximal pole fractures, you know, when you go dorsal, you can get, get it right in the middle. So in my mind, I'm gonna do, go dorsal on all proximal poles. And um, I think waste is, is the dealer's choice. And then when you get more distal, you go the other way, you know, to go to the volar. So flash forward ahead, um, I let him play um, in immobilization and being overwrapped. And um, then he's back here now six months later and he's complaining of more wrist pain. I let him get back to play probably three months later. Okay, so this happened during COVID, I saw him once, he was in a brace afterwards. You know, he was going to do some home range of motion exercises. I never got a CT to document union. And um, he played this summer football league and I let him play with protection on it. Okay. Never really was perfect. You know, was, you know they're, they're pretty stoic. So they're like, um, I have a little bit of pain. We kind of monitored it. And then at six months, we see these x-rays right here. So 
Um, Dan, what do you think? What, what's going on at six months? Is it healed? Okay, so now he played this elite summer season and now he's going into football season, right? And this is, he's gonna get a D1 scholarship. What do you do with him now? What are our options? I think that's good. I think that I think it's not healed. And I think at six months, it's not going to heal without something else. And I even tried the bone stimulator. So we talked about it and he made the decision for his junior that he wanted to play. So he played his um, season and he did great, uh, immobilized and wrapped up in a, in a club for the games. So at the conclusion of the season, he comes back and he sees me now. And what do you think now, Anna? Did we make the wrong choice? He's, get, he's, getting, he's starting to get his D1 offers coming in now. And he's like, he's like, Dr. Cott, this thing is killing me. So, so what's happening now? Kind of talk me through what, what this looks like. Go back with the one before, yeah. Yep. And then can you make any comment with the distal fragment? What's starting to happen there where it uh, articulates with the radial styloid? Yeah, you're starting to get a bone spur there. So this guy, this is like a stage one arthritis. Okay, so um, what do we do now? Jamie, what do you, is this when we bring out the vascularized graft? So you go in there and do this, how are you gonna fix it? Yep. Yeah, it's a mini, I can track mini. I have a standard. Lou, what do you think? No problem. Nine months out, he's got to have surgery now. What are you going to do? So I did exactly that. I revised it. I took it. What's that? I do, but in this case, I wanted, to, I just packed the hell out of it with Ilya Presbyterian. I mean, that to me seemed reasonable. Um, literature really doesn't show a big difference on the vascularized bone graft. I didn't get any additional imaging. 
and then I upsized them to a standard screw and I didn't have stability. So I put an extra mode of fixation, which was this K wire. And then I thought I had better control of things. He comes back in and now he's complaining of right-sided wrist pain. What do you think, Hadad? What's going on? This has been going on for two weeks now. Yeah. Right, right. So now he's got bilateral proximal scaphoid fractures. Here's just another picture of, you know, where that pin was inserted for that additional point of fixation. So I took him back and then I, go, I went ahead and put a screw in the, in the right side. So now he's got a screw in both wrists. What kind of a mobilization? And, he's in a, and, and by the way, he's in a cast on the left side. So what do we do now? Do we cast his right side? Do we just put him in a brace on the right side? Yeah. Yes, he owns the bone stimulator. I said, put that thing on all the time. Yeah, I, I actually didn't put him in a cast on the right side. I just put him in a, uh, on a brace on that side. I think it's the Exomed, uh, Exogen, yeah. I think we got it approved just given the duration of this case. Um, and there he is going into his senior year now, four months post-op on the left, three months post-op on the right. And I'll show you this next view. And just to, and I think, I think we're okay. We're definitely okay on the right side. He's got a little bit of left-sided pain. So Todd, what you said about the x-rays being unreliable, you're gonna get an additional study on him before letting him play his senior year. What if it shows that it's not healed? His senior year, he's going D1. I didn't get an additional CT. So we, time will tell, because I don't think there's anything else. I think if this doesn't work, then he's looking at you know, some major reconstructive procedure and he's far enough out from the uh, minimal. It's not normal, but it's minimal. And I'm just letting him fly. Would you do anything else, Jamie, at this point? And what if it's positive? Would you not let him play? He has a special brace and he actually just feels more comfortable playing with it. Um, but I'm not convinced that left side is done. I don't either. Do you? I didn't. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, right. You can show me.
Did you did you email them to me? Yeah. I pulled them up. 